Hey guys, before we get started with today's video, I just want to mention a couple of things. The first one is we have, we've been playing here with the team. We've been playing Apex Legends and we got a video coming out, I think maybe tomorrow or the day after posting this video um, with our thoughts on that. Um, and also, before we get started with today's project, I want you guys to get the template. Yours might look a little bit different but it's got everything that you need to get started. It's got the sprites that we have today, the objects that we're going to be working with, as well as a room setup. So that's all you re really need to do. Once you guys have that, we can get started with today's programming. So just like what we did with the previous line of sight video, what we're going to do today is a little bit different. So open up the object enemy that we have. <coughs> Excuse me but yours is going to look slightly different. I have my notes here so that I know exactly what I'm going to type. Um, and the first thing is in your empty project, you will need to add in a destroy event. So make sure you add that in. And basically what we're going to make today is something like a line of sight tutorial, like, like a line of sight tutorial, so, excuse me. It's going to be like line of sight, but it's more of a sensor box now. I wanted to do it in this way because we need to get used to using the rectangle um, collision list before we get into applying it as a line of sight object. So let's get into it now. We're, the first thing we're going to need is we're going to need two points. And I'm going to call it target point X. Let's set that to zero. And need another one. We're going to call it target point Y. I'm also going to set that to zero. Now, these two points are going to be the points that we are going to track whichever object is closest to us, right? So the way it works is the sensor box, just like the line, will pick the closest target and it will set the target points to those, um, to those coordinates, whichever object is closest. Now we need to create a list of targets. So we're going to call here, we're going to call a variable name, we're going to set it to targets. And just say ds underscore, uh, yeah, ds underscore list create. And basically what it does is it will create a list that we call targets. And it's going to be an empty list. We don't need anything in there. Don't need to give it a size or anything. It'll just create it on its own. Now we need to create a size of the box. So like I said, this is going to be a sensor box. And the only reason why we're doing it this way is so that we can get used to using the collision box but you can also use this for the similar method you can also use this for the collision ellipse and collision circle functions too so let's go with size i'm just going to use one size you can split that up but i'm going to go with this uh, i'm going to say give it a better name sensor size i'm going to set that to 128 just for demonstration purposes now, before we continue, let's go into the destroy event. Like I said, yours, well, your empty project might not have a destroy event. So I suggest that you put that in now. Here in the destroy event, what we're going to do is we're going to destroy this list. We want to do that so that it doesn't affect our system or it doesn't affect our game when we don't need it. Imagine having a list and not having to use it. That's a waste of memory. We don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to type in list, DS list. We're going to choose destroy and we're going to give it the same name that we gave it here, which is targets. Let's go in there. Targets. Okay. So now we've created this safety net basically, All right? Let's get now into creating the step event. Actually, let's create the, let's create what the, the box, the collision box would look like first. Let's go here. Let's draw rectangle and here in draw rectangle we've got several parameters that we need to fill we need to fill x1 y1 x2 y2 and whether we need an outline or not so here's what we're going to do we're going to take x minus um, sensor size divided by two let me just type this out and i'll explain it after And then last y, no, not that. That should not be y, that should be x, y plus 
Oops, plus sensor size divided by two, and we're gonna set that to false. Okay, so here's basically what sensor size divided by two is. I hope you guys can kind of figure that out, but just in case for those that don't, our sensor size is 128. And so here, what we're making, what we're making sure is that our character will be at this 64 by 64 point, which is the exact middle of our sensor box. And of course, we don't want the square to be um, filled in. We want just be in the outline. So if we play the game, or we play our little demo, we can see here that, oh, whoops, looks like I made a mistake. Outline, that should be true. Well, let's try that again. All right. Now we can see here that we've got this white square. Now this is what we want, or at least for the demonstration, this is what we want. And we don't have any programming inside the collision yet, so nothing's gonna happen at this point. Let's add in another debugging, right? So these, the next two lines that we have down here are gonna be debug sprites, uh, de for debugging purposes. Actually, it shouldn't even be the draw self part. It should be all these three lines here. Just gonna list those down for debugging. It's a good idea to have debugging sprites here just so that you know what something should look like. You don't have to, but it helps to explain things. Again, we're going to draw a rectangle, but this time what we're going to do is we're going to draw the rectangles at the target point X and target point Y. So let's do the same thing here. We're gonna say uh, target point X. And we're gonna, this time we're going to make sure it's just a little bit off to target point Y minus two target point X. This time for the second part, we're gonna make it plus two. Target point Y plus two. And of course, this time we want the outline to be false. We want a solid square box there. There we go, there's our little debugging code. And you can see up here in the top corner, you can't really see it that well, but there's a little white square up there. Okay, so the visual debugging system works. Let's now actually get into programming the actual sensor box. So here we go, we're going to start off with um, collision. This time we have a couple of things to choose from here. We've got collision rectangle or collision rectangle list. We're going to use collision rectangle list. Now the reason why we're doing it this way is so that we can get in, we can get the information for the closest object. Right now, here's a quick little hint. We're actually using our rectangle in the same way as here, right? You can copy and paste it, but I prefer not to do that. So I'll just type it out myself. So um, sensor size divided by two. Again, we want the Y to start above. We'll divide that by two. Now, for the second part, we're going to make sure it's y, nope, not y, plus x, plus sensor size. Uh, again, we're going to divide that by two, and y plus sensor size divided by two. Now, the object that we want to look for is actually the B actor object. And so all actors will be in this particular enemy's sight range. Do we want precise collisions? No, we don't need that. Do we want it to be detecting itself. No, we don't. So we set that to true. Which list? Now the list that we're looking for here is the targets list. That's what we need to do here. Targets. And do we want it ordered? Yes, we do. Set that to true. Now, if we come back here. We're actually going to store this in a local variable. So we go type in a variable a var. And I'm going to give my bar in name, we'll call it uh, detector. And we're going to set that to be here. Now it's going to, oops, we're going to make sure that we get the sensor here right in the middle. And right, what we're going to do is we're going to find the closest object. So we're going to say, not with, we're going to say four, no, we can't use that either. 
Now what we actually need to do is we need to get we need to get another variable. So var closest. All right. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to set this to targets. Now here's a little thing that you can do. Here's a little trick. We're going to use targets at zero. Now let me explain this. What we're doing here is we're going to say for the closest object, we're going to get the very first object in our targets list. There is another way that you can do that, and that is by typing in ds, oops, ds list, whoops, ds list, I believe it's get, nope, <laughs> guess not, ds list, and you can actually find value here. You can get that one here as well. Find value, ID, you will set that to target, and position zero. You can use that, but I believe it's a little bit slower than simply using an accessor. And that's what this is. So for me, using a Japanese key uh, keyboard, I have this next to the backspace key, but it's basically a straight line. For those who know their programming, if we have that, the two straight lines together, that means or. In this case, we're using it as an accessor to get the first value in the array. Once we have the closest target, we're going to set the target points here to wherever this closest object is. So let's try that out. Target point x equals underscore closest dot x. And we can go target point y equals, oops, can we get, yes, we can, closest dot y. Now, for the most part, this will be finished. However, we need one more line down here, and that is to get the collision rectangle list, or rather, the targets list to clear itself. The reason why we're doing this is because every single time that this is called, it will add to the targets list, and we don't want that. What we need to do is, just like the note here says, we need to clear it. So we're gonna type in ds list clear, and we're gonna put in targets. <clears throat> All right, let's try it out. Let's see what it looks like in our game. All right, so right now, seeing as this orange box is the closest object to the enemy, it's going to make sure that that target is there. Now, let's move in. Let's see what happens if we get closer. There we go. Now that we're closer to the enemy than this orange box, it's switched over its attention to us. Now, you can see that as we move further away, it doesn't quite know what to do. Now, the reason for that is because it takes in, it is looking at both the X and Y coordinates. Because our sprites for our block is in the top left corner, whereas our player is in the middle, it's going to favor the block instead of the enemy. You can change that to however you want it to work. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. But um, this is the basic functionality that we have. You can replace rectangle list with circle or even with, I believe it's ellipse. Oops. Of course, just keep in mind that the way the variables, the parameters that we need are going to be different. So I'm just going to keep it at rectangle. I don't want to break it at the moment. Now, how there are, apart from that gotcha, there is another one. The way that rectangle list works or the way that rectangle collision works is that it detects something from the center of the box. What I mean is, if we play the game again, if, say, this object here, we have this object here, that's true, and while we are closer to it, that makes sense. However, if we're up here, we can see that because our X and Y is far less, is a little bit outside of the range between these two, we need to make sure that, well, the enemy object will actually take notice of this box instead, right? So while it might work in the sense of a sensor box like what we have in this demo won't actually work when we try to implement it 
as a line of sight, right? Just like line, like collision line. It won't work the same way. So hopefully you guys found this as a good introduction video. I did want it to have that introduction to actually applying it as a line of sight video, but uh, hopefully you guys got something out of this. Like I said, again, we've got, um, <laughs> we've got an Apex Legends because who isn't playing that at the moment? We've got an Apex Legends video coming up for you guys. <clears throat> Hopefully I can get out of this cold sooner rather than later. I've been having it for a few days now. But thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.